What is judicial deference to agency decisions or interpretations? Well, to start with, an administrative agency serves many functions, and part of their functions is the enforcement of the regulations that they either create and or administer. Now, part of that process often means that the agency has to undertake a quasi-judicial function in determining how the regulations apply to someone. In these cases, oftentimes there's a decision involving the rights of someone, and these decisions are appealed up to the head of the administrative agency. But if the decision does not come out in favor of the party seeking the seeking to enforce its rights or seeking a favorable action by the administrative agency, they can challenge this decision in an Article III court. So what we need to determine is how will the Article III court review the decisions and legal interpretations made by the administrative agency during this process? So the answer to this question is rather long because it depends upon a number of factors. One, what is being reviewed? Are there questions of fact, questions of procedure, or questions of law? Because remember, on appeal, what a court is doing, and in this case, it may be the trial court that is reviewing an administrative decision on appeal, but what the court is doing on appeal is making certain that the law was applied correctly and that there were no misapplications or abuses of the law or standards applicable. With that being said, if the judiciary is going to review a determination of facts made by the administrative court, then it will look to see were there any clearly erroneous assumptions made by the court when interpreting the facts. Absent a clearly erroneous interpretation of the facts or an arbitrary and capricious decision that is a whimsical, unsubstantiated decision, we use the term arbitrary and capricious, decision based upon the facts that were present, then the court will not disturb that decision when it comes to a question of fact involved in the matter. Now, if the party challenging the agency's decision says, okay, there was a matter of procedure or discretion within the agency that was wrong, not legal, what the court will do is review to see whether the the administrative agency abused the discretion that was particularly granted to it in an enabling statute by Congress. So anytime an administrative agency takes actions, it takes actions pursuant to the authority expressly granted to it. And that authority generally comes in the form of an enabling statute. With that being said, absent a clear abuse of discretion or some plain error in the way the procedures were carried out. Oftentimes these procedures are carried out pursuant to the uh, Administrative Procedures Act, at least at the federal level, right? Absent a plain error in these procedures, again, the court is not going to disturb the decision. Now, in a different scenario, when there is a question of law, versus a question of fact. This brings on a different issue. What are the standards by which the court will review the decision if the party challenging the decision says that there was an error in application of the law? Well, the court can take two views of this. They can either do a de novo review, and that means they don't look at all at the administrative court's decision. They basically look at everything, the decision anew and make the determination themselves. This is honestly rare. Usually there is some level of deference to the administrative court's decision, and they'll look at the decision of the court and their interpretation of law based upon a reasonableness standard. The first standard that you'll see is what's called Chevron deference standard. And in this case, the court will defer to an agency's interpretation of a statute that it administers unless the statute itself is ambiguous and the interpretation of the administrative agency is not reasonable. So it's basically a reasonableness standard when applied to a, a 
statutory interpretation that's otherwise considered ambiguous. All right, so that's one Chevron deference. Another deference standard is the Skidmore deference standard. Uh, this standard allows the court to uh, defer to the agency's interpretation if there is persuasive reasoning behind the court's interpretation of the statute in a given way. This is far more flexible than the Chevron deference standard. Okay, And then lastly, the hour uh, deference standard, where the court defers to agency interpretation of its own rules unless there is plainly erroneous and inconsistent with the regulation. So it is a very, very high standard, plainly erroneous and inconsistent. Now, within the last couple of years, there's been another case that is expanded upon what we saw as the hour deference uh, determination. That's the Kisser versus Wilkie case. And in that case, the U.S. Supreme Court said that it will not defer to the uh, agency's interpretation of law if the law itself is legitimately, it is legitimately ambiguous and the interpretation was not reasonable. So what you're looking for is to determine, determine whether there was ambiguity consistent with the Chevron deference standard and whether the interpretation was again reasonable. So it looks like again you're leaning back towards the Chevron deference standard there. And the way these receive their name is pursuant to the name of the case when it came up on appeal before the Supreme Court. So in summary, there are numerous standards applicable that the court will employ when determining whether to alter an administrative court's decision based upon whether it's a matter of fact, a matter of procedure, or a matter of law that is being challenged.